We've spoken a lot about them. I'm now going to bring in Jesse LaGreca, who is a blogger for the liberal website Daily Coast, and he's been a fixture at the Wall Street protest. So, Jesse, you've, you've been listening to all of these descriptions of your movement. Where do you come down? I mean, we've talked about it as being immature. It hasn't had uh, policy uh, sort of directives. What is it that you are trying to sort of consolidate around there? Well, I think the matter at hand is that the working class people in America, you know, the 99% of Americans who aren't wealthy and aren't prospering in this economy have been entirely ignored by the media. Our political leaders pander to us, but they don't take action. They stand in the way of change. They filibuster on behalf of the wealthiest 1%. They fold on behalf of the wealthiest 1%. So the conversation we need to have is about the future, about what type of country we really want to be. And I think the most important thing we can do in our occupation is to continue to push the narrative that's been ignored by so many pundits and political leaders. I mean, the reality is I'm the only working class person you're going to see on Sunday news, political news, Maybe ever. And I think that's very indicative of the failures of our media to report on the news that matter most to work. We class are people. trying our best, Jesse. And I want and to I thank you. <laughs> I want to ask you some of your you know, most vociferous supporters, like our colleague Paul Krugman, has spoken quite glowingly about this populist movement. And you've even hear, heard uh, people around this table saying that it should be harnessed, but also saying that it's the moment now to perhaps try to translate that into some kind of political question, political demand. Is there something that you can make this about? I think the entire movement is about economic justice. I mean, it's to me, and this, I'm not speaking on behalf of Occupy Wall Street, I'm just giving my personal opinion. I think it's a matter of economic rights, and I think it's a matter of social rights and social justice. And to the people who would take offense to the word social being placed before justice, I'd invite them to reread the Constitution. Let me ask um, George Will, who wanted to ask you a quick question. Mr. LaGreca, I hear a certain dissonance in your message. Your message is Washington is corrupt, Washington is the handmaiden of the powerful, and a lot of conservatives agree with that. But then you say this corrupt Washington that's the handmaiden of the powerful should be much more powerful in regulating our lives. Why do you want a corrupt government bigger in our lives? You know, I find that a lot of these conversations about the government tend to deflect away from Wall Street because, let's be honest, the lobbyists have enormous power and they've shut out the voice of American people. So I think we should demand a government that is listening to people. And I find it ironic that when people demand action from their government, suddenly people tend to overreact and say, well, that's out of control government. Our government is a function of our democracy. By attacking the government, we are attacking democracy. So to me, I think, yes, we should ask our government to represent the will of the people. And if the will of people are demanding action, then they should follow suit. And do you think these uh, demonstrations are going to have momentum? I mean, is it going to continue now, day after day? Absolutely. People are extremely excited about what we're doing. We're engaging in a... Uh, direct democracy conversation. I mean, the General Assembly is really the new town hall. And we don't have a filibuster. We don't have lobbyists. We don't have a system that can be co-opted. And I invite everybody to come down and talk to us. Right. Jesse, thank you so much indeed. I appreciate you being there. Let me ask you, Donna, uh, clearly unions and other democratic organizations are jumping on this. Is this something that the Democratic Party feels will energize it as the Tea Party did the Republican Party? There's no question that Democrats recognize the strength of this movement. This is a grassroots movement. On the other hand, I don't believe that the party itself should try to lead this. Yes, teachers, firefighters, many others who've been impacted by the ongoing recession, they have a legitimate right to go out there and protest. George, many of these Americans uh, are feeling the effect of the economy, foreclosures. How many Americans out there have lost their homes or their homes are underwater? This is a legitimate movement, and we should not try to marginalize you know, them. And, and Peggy, I was stunned by uh, your column this week where you were talking about a group of Wall Street, uh, sorry, Walmart moms, and you were talking about people who were taking extraordinary steps to save money, donating yes. blood, yes. collecting aluminum cans. Yes. Um, there, I think we can all sometimes miss what is really happening in America. America is in distress. It's in immediate distress, paying the bills, foreclosures, etc. But another kind of distress it's under is Americans are smart and they can tell this ain't going to get better for a while. So there is a certain bitterness is too strong a word. Despair is too strong, but maybe very upset and not feeling so great about the future. It seems to me the question about Occupy Wall Street is this. 
what is your plan? You gonna spend the next six months blocking the Brooklyn Bridge? Or are you gonna harness a movement into political action, which means getting together with each other in living rooms, I, I, deciding- I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to ask Jesse that very quickly. Did you hear that, Jesse? Are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Are you going to harness this into a political movement or are you going to, you know, hang out for, for months? Yeah. You, I, what I find amusing is that now people are looking to us to solve the political problems, and they should. But I'm not going to uh, support one party or the other. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but I will encourage you to be a voter. I think we have succeeded tremendously in pushing the narrative that working class people can no longer be ignored. And I think that it's very important that we have this conversation because it's about the future of our country. You know, right now, working class people are being told to sacrifice. We're being told that our future is going to have to be put on hold in the name of austerity. And I can't name a single country that succeeded in solving their economic problems with austerity. So I think the more important thing to do is to come out and speak to us. The town halls that you see are very top heavy. Uh, our political leaders come and try to sell us a okay. message. They should be listening to us. All right, Jesse, thank you very much indeed.